Welcome back to Pop Review. I'm Alex. I'm Sean. We're going to be reviewing Wonder Woman. <sighs> Tell me what you thought. Oh, I love this movie. It was great. I, I'm I glad had a... we're in agreeing, agreement on that, at least. <laughs> yes, well, I, I had a great time. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of the... Well, by far, it's the best DCEU movie, Which hands isn't down. hard to do, from what I hear. It's, yeah, it wasn't. This movie blows the other three away, no mm -hmm. doubts about it. This is the best that they've produced so far. Yeah, I really like it. And actually, as you know, if you've been watching the channel a little bit, I'm not much of a either Marvel or DC person. I don't really partake. Uh, I don't know too much about the mythology. Um, so what I find about this movie really interesting for me is it actually sort of made me want to know more about what they're going to be doing with Justice League, for example. It, it kind of drew me into the DC universe a little bit in a way that I hadn't been before for either universe, really, you know? So, so that's exciting for me. Well, for me, it just got me more excited about Wonder Woman because the way that they structure the movie is that because it takes place in World War I, really, except for the beginning of the movie and the end, we spent all of our time in that period mm -hmm. that they can literally just do whatever they wanted so that just got me more invested in one woman well, herself, sure. the character. Not really, didn't really get me more or less excited, but for Justice League, it got right. me more excited to see her in Justice League. Okay, but well, sure. I, I was coming from a, I was coming from a neutral Fair playing enough, yeah. field. So, so yeah, that was good for me. But we can talk about a little bit about the DC universe and what this means for the DC universe a little yeah. bit later. Um, but yeah, initial thoughts. I think we both liked it. Um, it's getting really good reviews, uh, which makes me really happy. Um, you know, female director, which makes me happy. Uh, oh, Patty we'll Jenkins directed the shit out of this. She movie. did a really great job, and we can talk a little bit more about that later too. Um, but let's just jump right into the themes of this movie. I really liked, you know, because when you when you make a movie, any movie, um, obviously you have a target audience, but it's for people, right? So you want to draw in. Um, Pretty much everybody, you know, mm -hmm. in, in a way. So there were a lot of really universal themes in this movie that I really appreciated. Um, for example, you don't see a lot of mother-daughter relationships in movies. No. You see a lot of father-daughter. You see a lot of daddy issue stuff. Usually the mom's gone or dead or whatever it is. Um, we talked about this with uh, uh, Disney movies, actually, in particular. Yes. Um, we definitely talked about that the other day when we were at uh, Disneyland uh, at the new Mission Breakout ride. You can check out our review on that as well but um i really appreciated that because you don't get a lot of mother-daughter uh stories and as someone you know who has a mother and is a daughter uh that's refreshing and it's nice you know it's nice to see that that dynamic um what are your thoughts on that i mean for me this is going to be one of the landmark superhero movies that have come out Mm -hmm. Like, if you think about the, like, the history of superhero movies, like the landmark ones are the first Superman movie sure. that came out. Mm -hmm. Then there was the first Batman movie that came out. Mm -hmm. And then those kind of fizzled out. And then they weren't... Then we got the first Blade movie, the first X-Men movie. Mm -hmm. And then we got the, uh, the Dark Knight and Iron Man. And I think when we look back, like, 10, 15 years from now, we're going to look at that Wonder Woman movie mm -hmm. and say that this is the beginning of women superhero movies being taken seriously and being yeah. being accepted in our in our pop culture because the other movies that we got before Elektra, mm -hmm. Catwoman mm -hmm. and all the others weren't very good. Yeah. This is the first in this um, era of movies and it's the first great women superhero movie. Yeah. And I think this is going to be the point where we start seeing a nice good stretch of them. I mean we're getting this in a couple of years, we're going to get Captain Marvel from Marvel, True. and then I'm ho and then already there are talks about Wonder Woman two. Mm -hmm. So we're this. I think we're going to get into a nice groove of getting women superhero movies where it's just not a oh my god, the, there's one coming out. It's just going to be part of the norm. And I, th I and think that's, that's very great. refreshing. It, well, it certainly is. You know, coming from from a woman, um, of course it is. And um, sort of like going back to what I was saying though about the themes of the movie. Um, the reason that works is because there all these are these universal themes. Like it's not just for women, you know. No, absolutely. Of course, not. of course, it's that women screening thing, but we won't get into that. Um, uh, that's fine. No, of course it is. Um, but going back to the themes of the movie, that's why it did so well, I think, and that's why I think everybody can enjoy it. It's not just like for women about women, you know, because it's a woman superhero and a woman director. Um, it's there's these universal themes. There's the mother daughter element. There's um, leaving home, right? You know, which I really connected with, you know, Diana has to leave her home and she can't come back. And I think a lot of us, we live in LA, so 
you know, everybody's sort of a transplant. That's true. There's that feeling, you know, of like, you know, okay, I'm leaving, you know, and of course we can go home and visit, but there's still that feeling where you, you don't really belong there anymore and you, maybe something else is calling to you elsewhere. Um, and I think that's a very universal theme. It doesn't necessarily just apply to women, Amazonian superhero, godlike women. It applies to everybody. And mm, that's another, another thing that I really held on strongly to. Um, and then, you know, there's so many other different themes, but another one is, you know, there's the love story. Um, which I was a little nervous about at first because I wasn't sure how they were going to tackle it. Mm. I ended up being okay with it, but also very universal. You know, you you come to this strange place and you connect with someone, whether it be romantically or just a friendship. Um, you know, there's just so many things in this movie for everyone uh, that made it so successful, I think, and that made it really tight. You know, I think it's an hour and 44. Four minutes? Is that how long, uh, how long is it? I'm not 100% sure, but... I think, um, I think it was over two it, hours, It actually, never felt... Whatever length it really is, mm-hmm. it never felt that. It never felt long. It yeah. never felt that. And um, Versus, like, if you watch uh, Batman v Superman, it's like, oh my god, when is this <laughs> over? Yeah. And then because Suicide, Suicide Squad was so uneven, it's like, oh my god, when is this over? Because when it got to the third act, and we all know what this means, if you've seen that movie, um, the movie just felt like, when is this yeah. over? For Wonder Woman, it's just like... Oh yeah! Oh, it's yeah, over. Every every scene, oh, great. every scene meant something. There was some sort of reason for every scene that was in there, and there wasn't like too much gratuitous um, action or or violence or any any one direction. Like I think yeah. that, like everything was really well balanced, which um, is a tribute to the writer whose name I can't think of right now. Um, I think there were several writers, weren't there? Yeah. Um, and then of course Patty Jenkins as well. So well, well, speaking of Patty Jenkins, she pretty much came out and said that there's um, when the, whenever the Blu-ray does come out in a couple of months, that there aren't going to be any deleted scenes. She pretty much shot. Oh, I heard that. Whatever, yeah. whatever the movie we got is a movie that there is. There's no like director's cut. There's none of that stuff Look, that's, that's been going that's on with the really, other movies. That's, that's really very hard refreshing. to do. It's Absolutely. hard to do. You know, as a director, it's like, you know, you have to make choices. That's the whole job is like, you have to make choices. And sometimes you're like, oh, I don't know. Or you're like, oh, you know, it's better without that. I was wrong. But that's kind of incredible to hear that. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and let's just talk about Wonder Woman for a moment here. Let's talk about her character. Yeah. Um, I loved her character. I thought it was great. You know, I, I really could relate to her for the m- most part, you know, and we'll get to that. But, you know, she's very strong, sort of brash. I sort of related to her a bit, like, when she was a child, when Diana was a child. Yeah, I You know, just things. sort of, like, wanting to, like, it's like, oh, I just want to, like, kick ass. And, you know, <laughs> I don't, it, there's something really, and like, like I keep saying, like, there's, it's very universal. You know, everybody feels that way at Yeah, some I, point, I actually you know? love the scenes where she was just watching them train. Mm-hmm, and she's, she's like, just, like, going like this. Like, you can just <laughs> picture, like, little girls watching that. It's like... Yeah, mommy, daddy, that could be oh me. Oh my gosh, like, that was, that a was little very girl. that was very empowering. Like not as a woman, but just to see that, and then you could imagine the little girls dressing up like like that could be me walking into the theater. You know, because I went to like the nine thirty p.m. showing, and there were like several before that. There was a little girl walking out, just dressed as Wonder Woman. She's just like looks so excited, just got out of the movie, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, that's great. You know, that's so exciting. I'm like, shit, I should have dressed up. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of people dressed up in my screening. Oh lot, really? Yeah. A lot of women um, dressed up. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, I, I really liked her character. You can, I, I do have a little bit of a problem, though, with her arc following all the way through the movie. So, okay. so here's, here's the way I see it, and you can chime in on this. She starts off like, I just want to do what I'm made for. I want to do what I've been training for. I, I have this destiny that's bigger than what I'm here for, you know, like on this island. I have to leave. I have to, this is my destiny, to stop Ares and to save mankind. This is what we've been training for all this time. You know, she's being read the stories at night. Um, And it starts off really strong that way. And I feel like we lose it a little bit in the middle. I feel like she's just kind of just kicking ass just because that's what she does. I'm kind of like, okay, did she, is there any struggle she actually has to overcome here? Or is she just kicking ass, you know? They sort of pick it up again at the end when, you know, Ares is sort of like challenging her and being like, we can have this paradise together. And then she's like, oh yeah, actually maybe humans are shitty. Um, but I do feel like going from point A to point B, they they maybe forgot about it a little bit. And there could have been a little bit more nuance in terms of maybe seeing it in her face. Every time that like Steve did something assholey mm. and where she could have been more like, like, oh, do I really want to be here? You know, I, w- I would have liked to see at least a few times um, prior to the conclusion where she's like really thinking like, did I make the wrong choice? Should I go home? Like, are these people worth saving? And 
I think it's in the writing, but I think there was a missed opportunity there in the directing where it would have been nice to really get in her head a little bit more in the the middle part of the movie. Um, I no, I think her her arc was pretty successful. I mean, for me, I think that seeing her like as a kid, like trying to figure out, you know, where do I fit in on this island with all these warriors? Because I'm not training, and then she started to secretly train um, with her mother's sister. Mm-hmm. And then when she starts to decide, all right, well, now I'm going to go off with Steve and I'm going to dis- discover man's world because it's something that she always heard about but never really explored. When she got there, she starts to see that, no, men aren't all good. Well, right. They're and not think, all good. And I think... And it kind of planted the seeds to where she could have made that choice with Ares. Like, you know, I'm going to wipe all you guys up because you guys aren't all good. Well, right. I think it was there for sure. Yeah. And I, but I just, I would, I would have liked a few moments, like I said, in the middle where you really just hit that home, you know, like where I really wanted to connect with her a little, cause there were a lot of times actually where I felt Steve was kind of right, you know, where he's just like, look, like, no, you can't just go into the gala and kill everybody. Like there's things you don't understand. Like I actually related to him a lot. I'm like, yeah. actually, yeah, she doesn't really get it. You know, well, no, I, um, you can see it from his point of view and you could definitely see it from her point of view. And that's I, like, one of the things that, that really made this movie work for me is their chemistry. Mm-hmm. Like Steve, they're like, both very if, relatable. If that didn't work, this movie wouldn't have worked. In my opinion. I agree. Like, well, if you he's, cast he's that our, wrong... Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. he's actually the person that we relate with. Absolutely. Because he's, you know, human. He lives in the real world. You know, obviously, if we don't live in World War One and we... Or any kind of war, really, I don't have that experience. But, you know, it's coming from um, another human where we can connect to him and be like, yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah, that was terrible. You know, and yeah, there's more nuance than just going in and killing everybody. Like, there's, you know there's this whole political thing going yeah. on too. So, so yeah, he, he was a very important character. Um, and we can actually, uh, move on to talk about him now because I actually really, really liked his character and he was just, I mean, Chris Pine did an amazing, amazing oh, he, job. Uh, like he's been step, I've been liking him ever since, um, the first Star Trek movie that mm-hmm. he was in. But for me, it was like those scenes where he was explained to Dan, like, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. This is how this works in like, this is how it works here. Yeah. You can't just do this or this is what you have to do or him like just trying to cover for her or things mm-hmm. like that. I love those scenes. And it was nice because he wasn't being a dick about it. You know, no, obviously, no, obviously not. she's completely clueless. She's been living on this island her whole life. And, you know, he's just still just sort of like, hey, look, like I'm trying to explain this to you. It's not the way it works here. Please just trust me. Pl- please you know? put the sword down. Yeah. And please put the sword down. Put the sword down. <laughs> there were so many great comedic moments, too. Um, actually, there was a guy in back of us laughing like, ha, ha, ha. Ha! Like all the time, which was a little bit annoying, <laughs> but still, I'm glad that there were some comedic moments that everybody could enjoy. Uh, yeah. it, you know, th- these are very delicate issues, right? You know, it's during a war, and uh, the way you handle the life of a soldier, you know, is it's hard to do. And um, he died valiantly, and there was that beautiful shot. You're just on his face, and you're like, I think we might be just panning in, just a, or um, tracking in just a little yeah. bit. And, you know, you see these emotions going through his face, like, everything, uh, you know. Like, uh, should I be doing this? Can exactly, I do like, this? Exactly, like, what am I going to miss? And, you know, there's that really nice moment where they're dancing together. And, and he's like, well, this is what you do. You get married and you, you know, you have fun and you dance and you, you have kids and then you grow old together and then yeah. you die. And, she, and Wonder Woman says, you know, what's that like? And he's like, I don't know. You know, and how relatable is that? Like, yeah. you know, like that's sort of what you're expected to do, and not everybody's path leads you that way. And no, um, that was just a really beautiful, it's a really beautiful moment for him. You know, that where we can relate to him. You know, where he's just sort of like, you know, I'm just this guy who got sort of caught in this war, and I don't know what I'm doing. And that really um, played well, nicely played nicely with his death. I thought it, that made it so much more poignant. Where it's kind of like, you know, this is his duty now he's just trying to find the best way to get through it and i think um you know i've never been to war but in wartime you just have to make sacrifices sometimes you have to try to do what you think is right Mm -hmm. to get through not only the day but just that minute yeah to get to the next minute to get to the next minute to get to the next day to Mm -hmm. get to the next week and it's just like sometimes like you were telling donna hey we can't sit we can't help them right now yeah we have a mission we have to do like i I want to help them Mm -hmm. but we can't Mm -hmm. we're not in position to I want to, but I can't. And, and that's the kind of decisions you have to make during that time. Just like when he was about to do it, he paused. Mm-hmm. Like, am I really going to blow myself up? Am I really going to sacrifice myself mm-hmm. to do it? Because it wasn't just yeah, easy. Yeah, he's, he's got the right, gun pointed back, boom. you know. Yeah, and he's it, just like waiting or on his face. Yeah. It's just really because nice. Because it's, it's one of those decisions that, you know, it's 
you know, war is, it just shows you that war is tough. No matter what side you're on, no matter yeah. what position you're in, yeah. you have to make tough decisions yeah. that, are, that are life and death. Well, sure. And, you know, Wonder Woman is just sort of like, I don't get it. Like, why are we even fighting, first of all? And then, she, you know, she kills the, the bad guy. And he's like, wait, why are we still fighting? You know, so like, there's a lot of nuances that they're playing with, which are really nice. And um, Steve, uh, Chris Pine's character, really nailed it home for me. I really yeah. I really liked him, and I thought that he really added a lot to the film. Um, and honestly, like, you know, this movie, I like, there were like some moments where I was like tearing up a little bit, and that hasn't happened to me in a while. I know you're dead inside, but. <laughs> yeah, that didn't that didn't happen for me, unfortunately. Like, but I, I, I did. I but did, you know what I mean, though. There's these. Really... I did love their chemistry, especially mm-hmm. like when they were on the boat. They told me like, "Well, why can't you sleep with me?" Well, it's like, "Well, I can, but it's not uh, really it's proper." So great. Like that that whole set was like, "Well, then you can lay over here. Well, I'll lay over there." Like that whole part was great for me, though. The only thing I didn't buy with their relationship was when they slept together. Didn't buy that at all. It but felt can, really, can... really forced, mm. and I didn't think it was necessary for me it would have worked a lot better if they didn't sleep together so we see them walk into the inn and she's just kind of like want to do this you know like there's no he doesn't have to convince her he's not like coming at her like let me show you what it's like to be a woman you know like yeah. she's just sort of like hey i like this guy you know I'm, I'm i'm wondering why she didn't do it sooner let me tell you island full of women anyway uh, <laughs> my whole point though my whole point though is and we can move on from this and actually talk about that relationship a little bit more outside of a feminist context but i liked that because she's still super strong you know she she kicks ass she's the hero and she still like is able to have this sexual side of her that's not um it's not presented to us in a way that's like fetishized it's just sort of like this is actually even though she's supposed to be a god like this is representative of like normal women and i, I think that was really for me very powerful you know, to see that. And like you said, maybe you didn't necessarily need it in terms of the story, in terms of her character, but in terms of presenting this type of modern woman as a superhero to yeah. a younger generation, I thought that was really great. I mean, you make a good point, but the only reason it didn't work for me is because kind of what her, her character said on the boat, she's like, oh, well, sex is just for, for procreation, not for, I mean, in terms of pleasure. No. The man is not important. She like, has, yeah. Well, first of all, she doesn't know any better. Yeah, but in terms me, in terms of a man, but also she's kind of right. Uh, well, we won't get that, we won't get too far. I'm into not that. getting into that. <laughs> but for me, it's just like well, then if you believe that, how are you so quick? The first man you meet, just like oh, I'm just gonna have sex with you, not to procreate, just to just for pleasure. Well, that's that's that my whole I point did, though. I she didn't got buy to, that. She got to make that choice. She'd be like, you know what? No, I don't. I don't. Obviously, she made that choice, but I just think she got to it too quick. That's the only thing for me. For me, it just I, I would have liked it more, like, I'm going to compare it to another Marvel movie, sorry. In, in Captain America, like, Steve and, um, oh, God, and um, and her, his love interest, her name will come to me in a second. Like, not, they didn't have anything. You, it, They were kind of building toward it, and then Steve went away, and then they, they kind of, like, said, oh, I love you, I love you. But <laughs> nothing really, like, I would have loved it. When, when Steve was just like, you know, I have to do this thing, and he said, oh, I love you, and then that's when she would have been like, oh, I wish I would have done that. No, but, I, I, think it's, I, but I, I, I think it's great that she just went for it. I love I don't, I don't have, I just have a problem with her character. I just, it kind of contradicts what she said. That's the only thing that bothers me. I don't have a problem with her doing it. Right. I just don't believe her character would have gotten to that point so quickly. I don't know. I think, I think... It was more of a, like, she was making a connection with him that was not physical. And, Peggy and Carter, she's like, sorry. oh, I get it, you know? Like, like it's not... Because obviously she sees him naked, and she just, like, could care less. Like, kind of like, are you average, you know, for your for your gender? You know, and he's just, yeah. like, above average. So she didn't really care then, you know? It's not, like, a physical thing. But then, you know, they had feelings for each other, and she's like, oh, I kind of get it now. Like, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, let's do this. I, I liked it. I liked it. I, I just I felt it was just in there because it was supposed to be in there, not that the characters naturally I mean, got to that point. Okay, well, either way. I'm, well, first of all, I'm glad they, we didn't see the whole scene. I'm glad all we got was the kiss, and then that was it. Yeah. You know, I'm like, okay, I get it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for not being weird about it. Um, but in terms of their relationship, you know, maybe you didn't like that part, but I, overall I thought it was good. No, so. only that, that's the only part I didn't like. Everything else, like I said, their chemistry worked completely well. Mm-hmm. It's the backbone of this movie. But for me, that scene just kind of felt like, 
All right, well, there is a man and a woman. He's got to do something to pass the time. That just kind of where it felt like to me. It's not like, oh, I love you. You love me. Let's go do this thing. It just been like, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that's how it happens. Gotta, gotta, I don't well, know. No, no, but just for me, it just it didn't feel like they naturally just would have gotten to that point. Now, if for them to kiss at that point, or for them to kiss when they were dancing, that would have worked. And if that's all we got, that would have been fine by me because that felt more organic. The sex scene just, and I'm glad, uh, I'm with you, I'm glad they just kind of alluded to it. We yeah. didn't actually see more yeah. of it. Well, hey, that, I could be wrong. Maybe they just made out all night. No, but well, maybe they didn't. <laughs> no. That's not what they alluded to. Yeah. But if but if we didn't, for me, it wouldn't have changed anything if they had sex. Or they did, if they didn't have sex, the movie would have been, wouldn't have changed at all. For me, it wouldn't have changed. And No, no, it no, changed. no, it, it wouldn't have. So no. it just felt forced. It, it, it felt wouldn't forced. have, but like I said, like I think there's this underlying, you know, and he's a female director too, that there's this underlying response, and poor, poor Patty, yeah, this underlying responsibility of like, how do you represent, how do you progress in terms of like how to represent a, a strong woman on screen? That said, character-wise, let's talk about the antagonists a little bit. Because that probably is where the biggest problem for me lied in the movie. Do you have any thoughts on the antagonists? I'll jump off with my ideas once you. Um, I think they weren't really. The movie wasn't about them, and I think if you watch a lot of the Marvel movies, their 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 philosophy is where the story is going to focus on the hero, mm -hmm. and the villain is just there. For something to the hero, for the hero to overcome, we're not yeah. going to focus too much on the villain. They're just there for some uh, stepping stone for the hero to go over. And I think this movie took that approach, which didn't really bother me as much. I would have, but only because the only reason that I expected more from the villain because it's Ares. Like when you hear Ares, the god of war, you expect this powerful mm -hmm. villain that's going to be very. Uh, thematic and like overtaking of the movie but the way they played it he's just like lurking in the as as they allude to the movie he just lurks in the background I, I, <laughs> not really very menacing and then even when he does like show his true self it was like nah, okay I mean for me it was just like it 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 was what it was it didn't bother me as much only because I just seen that trope a lot yeah. but I wish just the idea of theories and the way they hit him so much in the trailers. I'm thinking like, oh man, once we see Ares, he's gonna start kicking ass. And then just as the movie went on and on and on, just like, oh, theories is theories, theories. And then when we got him, it was just like, it just didn't land as hard as it should have. I I totally agree with you. I'm laughing because they can't. I think it's like it's a lot of the casting too. They cast David Thewlis to play Ares, who. Uh, I'm like Professor Lupin. Like really, yeah, you cast Professor Lupin I to be Ares. I like, didn't buy that at like, all. You know, he's like this dapper British guy, and like he's the god of war, and like, I, and there's like this flashback right where he gets cast down, you yeah. know, to Earth, and he's like totally ripped, and it's just like David Thewlis, like he's like just ripped and <laughs> CGI, I'm, like so, yeah, of course, but I, I couldn't take it seriously at all. And let me let me piggyback off that slightly. I actually thought it would have been a much better choice that there was no Aries. J hear me out. Hear me I'm out. Listening, hear me I'm out. listening. Story-wise. Um, this is one, and this actually would tie into Wonder Woman's arc and would make me feel like she really lost something, you know, because I think the whole story is her journey. Um, you know, she left home for this reason. Like that is her purpose in life. Aries is her purpose in life. What do you do when you realize that everything that you believed your purpose to be you know, it's sort of a lie. And that was a really nice moment when she thought that she killed him, um, but it wasn't Aries. Yeah. When she's like, I killed him, you know, what? everything's supposed to stop. Like, what did I, what's happening? You know, and her, you see her whole like world and even identity, her whole identity is tied into this. You see her identity starting to unravel, you know? And that I thought was really, really nice. And I almost wish that there was no Aries for that purpose so that she can sort of, we can see her sort of recover from that and actually find an identity that's not tied to this story, you know? And I, I understand that it's part of the mythology of Wonder Woman, and, like, you know, I understand that they that's the way they had to do it, but personally, as someone who's not necessarily a comic book fan um, and doesn't follow the Wonder Woman, you know, mythology, it would have been nice story-wise to see that her whole 
journey was this lie and she has to recover from that that's my opinion I mean for, I, I would have preferred what they've done it just had Ares lurk even more so like not necessarily get his hands dirty but just kind of allude, make the give give the humans a little bit more temptations because he's kind of like the devil in the sense where oh, sure. he doesn't really do anything himself he just kind of presents them with an option and they always take the wrong choice mm -hmm. and I wish he just would have been a little bit more of a presence in the sense that he was even temp he could have even tempted Steve a little bit more or the uh, the group that they were with, and and just that like would, yeah, no, just right. sprinkle that a little bit more, and then have him be something else. Well, having him being um, I, Professor I, Lumen, <laughs> just to, for me, I just didn't it was buy weird, that. It was weird casting. I, it was I it was a little weird. That. And I lo actually lo I love David Thewlis. I think he's great, but I don't I don't know if that was the right choice. So I do I do agree with you on that front. That actually leads me to talk a little bit about the false villains in the movie. Let's talk about Doctor Maru a little bit. Um, she was set up as this. You know, and I was really excited when I saw that, like, she was, like, this woman. I thought there was going to be, like, this woman villain that was, like, really, um, you know, antagonizing and, and powerful and dangerous. And, of course, she was sort of to the world of humans because, you know, she invented this poison and it just was kind of nefarious in general. But I wish they would have done more with her. And it turns out that they're the false villains and that Ares is the real villain, yeah. you know. And Puppet that's, master. that's a, sure, that's a, I mean, that's a trope that's acceptable. But... It didn't work for me for some reason. I really wanted her to be, I'm like, oh, how cool. Like, you know, this, our first, you know, really successful woman superhero movie going against like this terrifying, like woman supervillain. Like, I just, I think that would have been really cool, but they, I think they missed a lot of opportunities with her character and like finding, finding some nuances in there to make her really dangerous, you know? And maybe she's like working with Ares and she knows it or anything more than what it was. It just fell so flat. What were your thoughts on her? I, for me, I, I didn't mind her character. I just, like I said, it goes back to the point I was saying before. I just wish Ares just kind of manipulated her a little bit more, almost to the sense where, like, she was nothing, and then through Ares' manipulation, she became who she was. Like, everything that she created, sure. he pretty much had well, a hand in indirectly. Well, like, kind of like how he alluded to that, the, um, the poison that she eventually made. Like I just wish we, that's how she got her thing. Well, that's well. This this is actually, and I know this is. But I know they don't have time because because they don't like I said, they they took the Marvel approach, and I know DC fans don't like hearing that, but it's basically that's what they did. They really aren't paying that much of attention to the villains because it's more, all about Wonder Woman, making sure we love Wonder Woman in this movie and, and going that's, forward. And that's very important. But in the face of adversity, like a good villain makes such a good hero. You know, like, I, I don't know. I We've talked about villains in our last Pirates review and like yeah. how I feel that like in, in contemporary blockbusters that villains are really being overlooked. Their potential is really being overlooked. There's like this sort of evil force that they don't really explore. And I, that's another conversation, I guess. But I really like strong villains and I like nuanced villains and I like villains that I can understand and villains that are sort of tied all the way through. Dr. Maru, I think, was a missed opportunity. Same with Ares. I feel yeah, like they it could have been... Yeah, exactly. They both were. But so, for me, they weren't, it wasn't as bad as other villains have been in the past. But I think, like you are saying before, the best villains are the villains that think that they're the hero. And then they have to, over, they have to stop the hero. Yeah. Because they, what they think is, like the Joker in The Dark Knight, he's like, well, no, I'm just going to do whatever I want mm -hmm. because I have to prove to you guys that what you're doing doesn't make any sense. Sure. So, like, when when the villain has a, a really strong motivation, yeah, the and thinks that what they're doing is right, those mm -hmm. those are the best villains. Sure. And I think in these superhero movies, especially this one and the Marvel ones, they tend to like, well, they give them a little bit of motivation. Yeah. But don't go too in depth. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Well. Whatever. I mean, you know, it, it, and Ares, I think you can't, you do understand a little bit because you know, it's like, okay, I get it. So yeah, humans are pretty jitty. So he just wants to bring back this paradise before humans. Sure. Okay. I kind of get that a little bit as a backstory. At least it's something, you know, yeah. but, but anyway, I think, I think it's time to move on talking about Dr. Maru. I think Dr. Maru, um, uh, brings up this whole thing. Where are the other women in this movie? Obviously, there's a whole island of them. They're all warriors, but they're not human, right? So Wonder Woman's sort of talking about this whole, like, I have to save mankind, mankind, mankind. And it's almost like she's just talking about men because we don't really see a lot of women in the movie. 
Uh, there's the secretary who is sort of like comedic relief, and we don't really get anything from her in terms of her character. Um, I don't. There was something. There's something a little off balance about it that I just didn't quite latch onto, and I'm sure they didn't, or maybe they did do it on purpose. I don't know. You know, because there's the scene where she walks into the. I don't want to say board meeting, but you know what I mean, with all the, the yeah. white British men, and they're like, a woman's in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like... What I is she doing here? I couldn't quite tell, like, you know... They could either go all the way with it, which I'm glad they didn't, in terms of the feminism of the thing, because I think it just speaks for itself. You know, she's just a strong woman character. Um, but it did feel a little weird that Dr. Maru, for example... Uh, is the only other strong female character, aside from the other Amazonians, of course. Yeah. But we sort of leave them behind in the beginning of the film. Uh, she's the only other potentially strong female character. And at the end, we realize that she's just kind of... Um, it's actually Ares, a man, a, a god, of course, but still a man, David Thewlis, <laughs> Professor Lupin, whispering <laughs> the ideas in her, in her ear of like what the chemistry should be. And you think she's going to be this brilliant chemist and like this genius, you know, but it's actually just a man telling her how to do it, you know, which of course I know they didn't do that on purpose. Um, but it's just like a little, it's a small thing where it's kind of like, Ooh, you know, you could have just made her actually be a brilliant chemist. And that would have been pretty threatening too. Like, you know, well, well yeah, but, I, but it, for me, it worked better that, that she was manipulated a little bit because that's kind of what Aries does. But for me, with the well, whole fine, feminism but... thing, I think the reason they, they went down that road is because to show how special she is and how women were, were used in that time period. Yeah. So, like, we weren't, okay. we weren't going to see a lot of women on the battlefield. We weren't going to see a lot sure. of women in where they were going. Mm -hmm. And then that just shows how... How like when Deanna when she was leaving Themyscira when her mother's like yeah the, that this world doesn't deserve you uh -huh. so to make her seem more special I think they kind of just at her point of view of a woman looking at our world at that period of time to see exactly how a men were and how women were treated and w what was expected of women so we only see it from her point of view for the mm -hmm. most part yes um, mm -hmm. see secretary was there like you said she was there for a couple of scenes was comic yeah. relief her scenes worked. But we pretty much saw how men treated women in that time period. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, well, why are you here? What, what are you doing here? It's kind of an allegory for just all of time, and really. It, even and even it would for me, it, it wouldn't have worked as well if we just uh, continue to see a lot of women being showcased in the movie uh, with, alongside of her. No, I agree. I, I totally agree. I just the whole thing with Dr. Maru, I just feel like that was a missed opportunity for another strong female character, but in the opposite way. You know, like she could have been a great representation for uh, mankind. Um, and it just sort of like turns out that she is just sort of self-conscious and um, manipulated. It's kind of like, well, actually, that's sort of what real life is for women. Like, I, <laughs> I, 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 so. I, I, I want to see that, but I want to see that more, uh, hopefully, in the sequel where like she goes up against someone... Uh, her equal that is a female. I want to see that. That would be nice. But yeah, I, that's but what I was for hoping. me in this movie, I I like the fact that they actually went down this road because she gets to see what our world really looks like. Sure. And how how men are and how women are treated and what is it so like she when she was trying on the dress like well why do you, why, how do I fight <laughs> I can't kick in this why am I like why am I be why do I have to dress this way why do I have to do these that's things? why I wear spandex so I can you know kick anybody you know so like if you saw if we like I said if we saw a lot of women with her she wouldn't have been so special and she would have that would have skewed her no perspective I, a little bit in my opinion I, I, I agree I agree um it's just it's just a thought um. We can move on. Uh, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the CGI in the film. Okay. First of all, generally speaking, I was very appreciative that it was not overdone. I did not feel like it was overdone. I feel like a lot of a lot of times in a lot of superhero movies nowadays, it almost looks like you're watching an animated film because so much of it is CGI. Yeah. And I I got the sense that they were doing like a lot of practical stuff. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of CGI, but like they, it was done in such a way it was like kind of more graceful for me that I felt it didn't take me out of it. There were a few scenes, however, where I was like, "Really? Thoughts?" Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with you. The the fight scenes, by the way, uh, like I know I in our review, our trailer review, I was kind of worried about Gal Gadot. Right. Like, let me make a set because before I forget, I want to make sure I, I say this. She was great in this movie. Yeah, she really And I was she worried it. that she wouldn't be able to carry this movie. The st the way Patty Jenkins used her 
is like stuff you want to show in film school. Like mm -hmm. she, Gal Gadot, no one's gonna say that she's like the best actress in the world because she's not. But what Patty Jenkins did is like I'm just gonna give her just enough mm -hmm. that she's gonna be able to carry the what we give her. And and some of that stuff they give to Chris Pine, and he does great with what he's given. But the stuff she's given is just enough where she we believe her. And especially her fight scenes. Her fight scenes are great. But to get back to what your CGI like when she things, goes Super Saiyan? She like <laughs> reach, she like achieves her final form. She like mega if she was a Pokemon, she would have mega evolved. And she's just like, Whoa! I'm like, whoa! Holy moly. But the stuff that was a little bit distracting was the parts where you can clearly see it's her. Yeah. And then you can clearly see that see, it's, it's built it's on complete a complete CGI. I agree. And then they flip it back to her again, which in the that, grand scheme of things, like, I, some, yeah, some of those were very some, clunky. Some transitions were smoother than others, but some were just like, oh, obvious, her, not her, her. Specifically, there was a scene in that German town, it begins with a V, I can't remember the yeah, name Yeah, I can't remember it. this. But, but um, she's kicking ass in that German town with uh, her lasso of truth. Yeah. It's a wide shot, and she's just like whipping it around. And it's so clear that that entire scene is done on a computer. Yeah. And it's, it's just obvious, and I'm wondering why they choose to do that, because... What I would have done is just have actual humans, you know, doing the choreography, and then you CGI the rope in, you know? But instead, they wanted it to be all CGI. And she wasn't even doing, like, crazy flips or anything like that. It was really just like a... They just sort of, like, panned along um, or, or tracked along this axis. Uh, and she's, like, fighting in a circle. And I'm like, there really really is no need for that because it's so obvious. You can tell, you know? And it, it takes you out of it when you see stuff like that. And then, and then, and then of course, she, like, you know... There's a close-up, and she whips up, and it's her. And it's like, okay, but you were just, like, an animated yeah. character, like, the shot before. I mean, I think you the know. reason... Excuse me. I think the reason they, they just do it, because the average movie gore doesn't really mind or care as much. The more movies you see, um, it oh, starts yeah. to stand out more and more. Like, oop, that's yeah. real. That's not real. Yeah. Like, really good CGI is CGI that you can't tell a CGI. But when it's used We're to not the there point, yet. no, well, no. The, trust me, there's CGI that you don't. We don't know is CGI, like the the stuff, like the backgrounds, things like that. That when they put the stuff in, you can't even. Well, I tell. still know, but I don't care. You know. Yeah, but I but the, and the average person I think doesn't care. Sure. Like if you show them CGI Wonder Woman, real Wonder Woman, like really really quick, the average person, oh, I couldn't tell the difference. Right. Well, to a to, to a certain too degree. Too bad. <laughs> but I, I do like for me it did like oh that. Like for a second, it kind of pulled me out. Yeah. But then, because the the choreograph, the the choreography, choreography, sorry, was so good that once it went back, I was just like, oh, I'm back in. Yeah. So, the, kudos to the stunt team and kudos to um to Patty Jenkins again. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Like there were some parts that just like oof, but for the most part, it worked. The CGI. Yeah, for the I most mean, part it worked. was it was a lot lesser than like I said, a lot of con other contemporary blockbusters. Um, the, the only thing that I'm getting sick of seeing is speed ramps. The gratuitous use of slow motion in ac ac action sequences. Mm. And it's used so often that it loses its potency. You know, like, like that, the, first, the, the, the way the movie ended was a slow motion shot of, wait, was it the way, it, no, the way the scene ended maybe, I can't remember, but anyway, she's coming towards the camera and she's like, I think it might have been yeah, the way the movie no, ends. Yeah, that's how the yeah, movie and, she, and she's like leaping through the air and it's Which, slow motion. I, I didn't like that, but whatever. No, I don't either, um, but it would have been better if we hadn't seen that so many times throughout the movie prior to that. She's like, okay, I get it. She's like, in the air. She's slow motion. You know, it's like, okay. Well, well the last shot of the movie is the only part of slow motion usage I didn't like. Throughout uh, the rest of the movie, I thought they used it perfectly. Really? I mm -hmm. thought it was too much. I didn't know. I th only because they, they set the tone at, at, on Themyscira where like, yeah, we're going to be using this. Well, I'm and saying I, I wish they wouldn't have done that. <laughs> and, they, and they and they found clever shots to use it in when they're flipping off the horses and things like that. I really I really like that. And then with one of the women, how she's like kicking them oh. into the wall and kicking them out the window and stuff like that. I like that stuff. It, I can I can totally see how you think they they use it too much. For me, it was just enough. Well, because I, and that, I actually that last really, shot was just like, all right, now you've, you've well, because went too I really far. appreciate it and I think it's really cool. Like when we were watching the Atomic Blonde trailer, for example, yeah. like everything, like it's all just super real, like really, really, really well done choreography, all in real time. You know, just kicking ass, and like I find that to be much more effective and real, like you know, than like the slow motion, like I'm gonna hit you with. Molasso, 
you know? It's like, well, just actually do it. And, like, I would love to see it in, in fast motion so that I can actually... And, and then if you want to use it, use it sparingly so that you can, like, breathe. And, like, so, like, that moment's, like, a moment of awe instead of... Yeah, so I, I, I think they should have split the difference and, like, you know, really used the slow motion in a way that was meaningful for that moment, not necessarily just, like, as a as a entertainment, you know? I... We're going to agree to disagree, I think. Because, like I said, for me, the slow motion worked. I think they used it just enough. But, like, again, that last scene was just like, what the hell is she jumping towards? <laughs> Didn't make any sense. The audience. To me. Like, please come see my next movie. Um, okay, so we talked about CGI. Um, well, let's talk about the ending of the movie, um, and then we'll segue into the DC universe. Um, how did you feel about the ending? I actually really liked that, um, that Steve died. I oh, mean, yeah. because that was the moment, like, when she's coming up to the, the wall, after the war's ended, she's coming up to the wall of all the fallen soldiers, and she sees him. Like, you can see it in her face, and it's really good on Patty and the editor um, for hanging on her that long as she sort of processes the whole, you know, what just happened. And that's the moment where she decides to stay. And <laughs> I think that's a really, really nice ending. And then, of course, there's the bookends where we see her, you know, getting this package from Bruce Wayne, um, and then the at the end, you know, she she writes him a little email like thanks for bringing him back to me. I just thought that was really really well done. It was short enough, you know, where I wasn't like annoyed and like wasn't enough. There wasn't like too many Easter eggs. Like yeah. there's the the Wayne Enterprises truck comes in the beginning, and that was it really. Yeah. Um, I just thought it was really nice. How'd you feel about the ending? I, I liked it too because only because if you don't, if Steve doesn't die in that way, then you have to explain well what what happened to him that whole year because uh, um. Throughout the years, because the way they set her up in in B versus S was that she kind of gave up on humanity. She's like, "Oh, I tried hmm. to save the world. That kind of didn't work out for me." So we have to we had to give her character motivation to be that way in B versus S. So her losing Steve kind of gave her the motivation to be like, "You know what? I tried to be in man's oh, really? world. I kind of because I didn't see it. I didn't see Babies as us, but that's not the impression that I got after Wonder Woman. I got the impression she's like, you know what? This is worth staying. This is worth fighting for. I did the right thing because Steve is a good person and this is where I'm supposed to be. That's how the movie ended for me. And of course, I didn't see Beavers as us, but like, well, that seems to be very competing well, in terms of her I, character. I, I think, well, well, here's true, but I think it, it puts her down that road. Now, whether... Wonder Woman 2 or 3, because of course it's probably going to be a trilogy, takes place between those years of Wonder Woman 1 and B versus S, where we see Hirsch okay. continually trying well, to I save would mankind I would and then just so, failing then. and failing but, and then just kind of her kind of almost kind of like giving up on the idea. Yeah. Or, she becomes a pessimist. Yeah, but I can understand, like I can, I, like I said, I love the fact that she that Steve died and then she kind of like longed for him. And again, goes back to the fact why I didn't like that they slept together. It kind of it would give her more po reason to long for him. Well, that's oh, even, my... wait, that's even, you have it once, you like it, and then you can never have it again? Or Just saying, that's I don't way know. more poignant than not having it at all. I don't know, for me, I just thought it would have been better, like, <laughs> she's like, oh, oh, we just had a kiss, or just, well, I don't whatever. know. For me, yeah. I just, but anyway, <laughs> love the, and also, I love the fact, and I think this is probably the first time I think this way, I love the fact that there was no post-credit scene. I love the fact that they didn't do anything because it's on its own. It's, this you know, is a standalone movie. Mm -hmm. Yes, we saw. Uh, we already know. We already know how it ties in. Yeah, we know. Else. Like so we obviously, need, Bruce yeah. gave her the picture mm -hmm. in the beginning, and then she kind of like writes in the email, like you said, at the end. But the majority of this movie takes place in World War One, and it would have been it would have felt really odd and jarring mm -hmm. for us to see like something that sets up Justice League. Yeah, like if she would have been like, all right, like if she would have been like. Or I'm sending Bruce the email and then like say hi to Bruce or something like that or like yeah Bruce let's go get the team together or some crap like that like for me it would have been like mm, I wouldn't have appreciated it as much I agree because of where the movie was set mm -hmm. I appreciate that there was no post even though I yeah. sat through the end I was like I want to see if there is one I did but too. when it wasn't one I was actually like wow mm -hmm. I'm actually happy that there wasn't one right. I agree. I agree. So yeah, I really like the ending of the movie. I think they tied it up really nicely. Um, Me too. So let's before we end, let's talk a little bit about what this means for the DC universe. Because uh, in their trailer review, we were a little concerned. Like this movie has to do well, otherwise, yes. you know, Justice League's gonna fail and the whole thing's just gonna fall apart. And the movie seems to be doing really well, and we both liked it. 
Uh, me as not necessarily a fan of comic books in general. You're a comic book fan, but not necessarily a DC fan. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm. A, I, I like to say I'm a, com- I'm a superhero fan. I like okay. Marvel. I love DC. Like my favorite gotcha. superhero is Batman. So for me, I, I was always saying that this movie has to do well yeah. for Justice League to do well. Yeah. Because this movie failed financially or failed critically, mm-hmm. and it didn't get a lot of audience appeal then you wouldn't be excited for Justice League. Just like how you said, like, oh, I love Wonder Woman, now I'm more excited to see Justice League. And mm-hmm. that's what the majority of the fans are going to feel after coming out of Wonder Woman. Ooh, when's Justice League coming out? Mm-hmm. Because um, during my screening, like, they showed the Justice League trailer before it, and everybody was hyped for Justice League. If this movie didn't hit, mm-hmm. then if you're like, oh, Justice League's coming out, uh, Wonder Woman, I just saw Wonder Woman. I don't know and, you know, not to play that card, but, like, it's drawing a lot of women in, I think. Into yeah. that universe. Yeah. And, I mean, ba- Batman's my favorite, and he's a man, you know, so it doesn't, it's not like one or the other. Like, if you're a woman, you don't have to like Wonder Woman, and if you're a man, you don't, you can't not like Wonder Woman. But, you know, just because of the way it was made, and there's a female director, and, you know, Gal did such a good job, it really, I think, it draws that female fan base in, too, which Absolutely. is lacking a little bit in, in the comic book world. I don't speak for everybody, of course, but if you look at the statistics. So... No, it's, it's, it's good to get more uh, fair representation, and I think, like mm-hmm. I was saying before, that we're going to look back 20 years from now, and this is going to be the start of it, mm-hmm. for me. Like, it's going to start with Wonder Woman, it's going to continue with... Um, with Captain Marvel, and we're, it's going to go on and on and on, and we're going to get more and more female superhero movies, and especially ones that are good. Like I have, mm-hmm. I have faith that Captain Marvel is going to be good, and I have faith that Paige Jenkins is going to do a good movie with part two. And this goes to another thing. Um, talking to you guys, Warner Brothers, this is how you do a superhero. Movie. Like you guys have done great mo- ones in the past, but for me. You leave your directors alone. You guys meddled too much with Suicide Squad, and that movie became uneven. You leave Patty Jenkins alone, and this is what you get. Mm -hmm. So I would say leave your directors alone. Try not to meddle as much, Mm -hmm. and then you'll get a good movie, and we'll all like it, and we'll all see the next one now. Yeah, well, there's, so, no, there's no point in hiring a director and then not trusting their choices. But that happens know? a lot. Of course a it lot, does. A lot, but a lot, a lot. Just, you know, just saying. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing more from from her and, and just in this universe. And um, we'd really like to know what you guys think about this because there's so much, there's a lot of layered things here, you know, just in terms of the DC universe, in terms of, you know, the representation of women in Hollywood, which is a completely different conversation, but relevant. Um, and just how the story went and like how it plays, you know, into the, coming into this unit, this new universe that they're sort of building. So we'd love to hear from you. So be sure to like, subscribe, um, check out some of our other stuff and be sure to stay tuned, uh, when we do the next review. So my name's Alex. I'm Sean. And this is Pop Review. Thanks for watching. Take care.